Hey, you get your pain on, get your pain on with Ghoul and Crocodile. Get your pain on, Thursday morning time. Get your pain on, it's me, that's right. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'm Dallas Kemp here on Get Your Pain On. And with me today is our terrain specialist, Hello. Andy Samuels. You, Hi. Wow, you jumped right in there. Oh, yeah, super Andy's jumped there. in there. Sorry, I didn't know you were going to announce my name. I'm Danny Samuels. I'm the hobby and terrain specialist for Privateer Press. Thank you, sir. Thank you for reiterating. Perfect introduction. Um, today on our, uh, on our mix board, the master of the mix board, is Mr. John Winkle. Hi, everybody. Tony's not feeling good today. I feel bad for Tony. Get well, Tony. Don't make me bring you some soup, boy. I should bring Tony some soup, boy. So today, we're having a zombie dracodile showdown. It's not really a showdown. It's more of a show-off. What would it be? I like to think it'd be... Oh, God. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I just didn't want it to happen. I, was, I thought we said Ghoulodile. That's true. Or Dracodalus. Not Dan Danadile. Dancadile? Come on. Danka? Dracodanny. No. That's, that's worse. Way to go. That sounds like... Oh no, that's awful. Sounds like awful. Sounds like awful. Sounds like a bucket of note. That's awful. Note bucket. It's kind of like a doubt bucket, but not as cool. Good band name. Dow Bucket is the coolest band yeah. name. I feel like that should be on the list. So, anyways, as we said, we each have uh, zombie dragodiles. Um John, I'm gonna show mine off real quick to the to the screen. I'm gonna put mine up here on the little. Well, screen. good thing we're on you then. We are, oh, we are on me. So, I got my zombie dragodile, and I've cut a big hole in his belly, and I got ribs and viscera, and he's got cut open meats there and there and he's got some innards hanging out more cut open meats more cut open meats more cut open meats um, I've also strapped rope around his upper jaw completely coated the top of his head in uh, candles to make him like a um, kind of like a blind walker and to reinforce that idea I got some little tiny gems and I hollowed out his eye sockets mounted these little gems in there and then re-sculpted around it. Uh, so those will be painted like bright, shiny gemstones, probably red. And we got some little candles and skulls embedded in his back spines. and He's got rope wrapped around his race, wrist. He's got a bracelet. He's wearing his little bracelet. Um, he snapped it to remind himself when he forgot something. So little rope, little torn meat, candles and skulls. That's kind of that's kind of the angle I went, and I'm going with more, um, more freshly dead, right? I'm uh, still pretty green in my color scheme. I see what you did there. I'm green in my scheme. You folks were mentioning that things sounded a little quiet. If that's still the case, let me know. I'm adjusting on the fly. We're getting there. Uh, and uh, so that's my Dracodile. Danny, why don't you explain what you did to your guy? So get him up on there and show him off. So, for mine, I went, you know, fairly similar idea there where we had, like, the rope bracelet, all the good zombie things that you need. I uh, took this bit here from the um, our big battle engine, and I turned it into a necklace. You can kind of see the it there. The sacral vault. Sacral vault. Um, I ended up having to like cut it slightly and move it and bend it to get that to work and fit in there. I will say real quick, I hate that I did not think <laughs> of that bit and that you <laughs> thought of it. Well, that's why you have it, so, right? Fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, so I did that. I also wanted the jaunt to look like it was broken and hanging. I don't know if you can see this here. Um, I snapped the jaw off. Uh, and like hung it down and I ended up having to fill it and sculpt by hand this little carapace uh, plate on its underbelly to fill that gap. I dremeled out the uh, tongue, which was terrifying. Um, 
and could have hurt really bad, and I re-sculpted a new tongue to make it look like it was hanging off. Uh, yeah, I got the little normal handles on his back. I ended up sewing over his eyes. Like yeah, I saw that. Head. Yeah, I don't know if that's in focus there. Well, you, you remember that's sure. 30 seconds behind, so. That would explain a lot. <laughs> there we go. Sweet. This is my first live stream, so we're just kind of going with it. <laughs> I like how he's like, <laughs> I can't get it in focus. I'm like, it's doing great. That's behind so, time. As you can see, <laughs> as you can see, I uh, sewed over the eyes. I also wanted to sculpt a uh, basically human sized voodoo doll on his side to give him a little character. And then I went with a fairly scenic face because terrain is fun. And there we are. And that's kind of the. That's what you did. That is it. So even though we got two of the same thing and we have similar elements, um, I think we have two very distinct uh, looking dragodiles here. And I think that that's kind of the fun of this is we took something that is, um, you know, it's a cool model, right? I love the dragodile model. What? Oh, sorry. See, I'm bad about it. Uh, we took a cool model and we both just kind of made it characteristically our, ours um, using some of the same elements but able to create completely different effects. Like yours yours is much more, like I feel like yours is much more further along in the deadening process than mine. Um, mine feels a little more freshly dead, like like maybe he just went down and may lock a was just like, whoa, 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 boys, don't eat that. And he went over there and threw some candles and strapped some ropes and, you know, did some voodoo hoodoo magic and brought him back to life real quick. Where yours has been like under the service of Caliban for, you know, maybe 22 years. Yeah, he's been getting a lot of work. Yeah, he's, he's seen some done. action. So I like that uh, by just uh, – just having fun with your uh, models, you can create some personality and flavor unique to you. Legionnaire says, so any thoughts of hanging heads off them for uh, brain snacks for later? Uh, that's a great idea. And if I wasn't already painting, I would have done it. But kind of in the painting spot, I can't, don't really like adding stuff after that. But that's a really good idea. Um, I could see... Yeah, I could definitely see adding some uh, little brain bits or some little head bits, like a little, like a snack pack. Just a snack pack, just a little snack pack. Like, oh, like a little fanny pack of heads. <laughs> Did you ever add the, uh, the fish hook to the back of yours? Stop. Because. Stop. It's great having the head hanging from the top of it. From the top of it. From the top of it. Yeah, yeah I did not get. It comes like off of the rod. <laughs> I did not get the fish hook made. Uh, much to much to my own dismay, I uh, I failed on that one, and that's just the way it goes sometimes. So right now, what I'm doing is I've mixed some um, Crixbane highlights, some Trollblood highlight, and sickly skin, and I'm I'm working in some highlights onto my flesh, keeping it kind of green. Danny looks like he is just mashing paint. Looks like some cardic flesh over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to push that kind of more uh, warm flesh color into this uh, sickly skin base, which, thank you, that color is phenomenal. Um, I just wanted good. to, yeah, into the, into the shadows, kind of where it would be, uh, have a little bit more depth. I wanted to push a more warm tone in there. That so how'd you later. start painting that guy then? Um, the way I started was with a uh, Zenithal Prime. Um, I went in. I actually used a. Uh, I used black, and then I went in with gray through the airbrush real quick to give it a little bit more depth. Okay. Then I dusted it with white. Sure. Then I really lightly hit sure. it with the airbrush. All right. Just to uh -huh. push in right. that sickly skin, and I'm kind of that's where I'm at, working from there. And you're going for more of an albino look. I am. Where yeah. I, I'm going for more, a little more traditional um, reptile flesh, it's keeping in the greens. But I've muted all mine down quite a bit. It's not like vibrant green like you would see on a lot of studio uh, gators, but still, still very green. What are you using to mute your green down? 
You pushing in a warm color? Um, you know what? I don't. I don't even remember. Sure. What did I use? Um, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of mixes. So there's um there's Umber Lumber, Crixbane Bass. Um, the 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 upper skin was Ortic Olive, Sickly Skin, and some Trollblood Highlight. So just kind of mixing around with a whole bunch of colors. Um, like Danny, if you take a look, it's pretty hard to see on the screen, but if you take a look, you can see all the different. There's a yeah. bunch of tones uh, really have hiding of, in in the flesh. A lot of modulation in there. It shifts around a lot. I don't remember how I paint. I just paint. And then Nathan Dallas or Nathan, Nathan Dallas. asks, <laughs> Dallas, can you talk about the differences between the P3 brushes? Like, what's the difference between a work brush and a hobby brush? Uh, they're hobby work brushes. We have studio brush. So we have the work hobby brush and the work studio brush. Uh, it's basically sizes is what that is. Uh, the studio brush is a uh, natural uh, natural hair brush. Uh, the hobby brushes are th synthetic. But work and fine, th those are just sizes. So the fine is a small, work is a bigger brush. Does that make sense? Makes sense that to makes me. Sense. You guys are still really quiet today, they say. Yeah, I keep tweaking. I've literally got the main mix maxed out. I'm trying to slowly adjust gain so that we don't blow Danny out. And Tony Konacek is watching us from his sick bed. Which is probably why we're having problems. Sit. Am I coming on? What? Don't Hi, Tony. I missed you. No, because he's not here. Oh. Well, <laughs> that seems more logical, but I like to have fun with that. Putting in hard lots. That's what we do. We put in them hard lots. Every day, them hard lots. Aaron says that the uh, that the volume is better now, so hopefully that's the case. Let's just make it loud. Oh dear God. Squiddle it, squiddle it, squiddle it, dear. Oh my God! I went to karaoke the other night. It was rad. What did you do on karaoke the other night? Well. We can't talk about specific songs on oh, Country Payment on. I don't think that's legal. Mm. No, come sue me or something. I think mm. I don't know. Mm. Let's but just say it ain't brought down the place. Uh, I'm just gonna say it was awesome. I and have heard legend. And if you come to if you come to Lock and Load, you just take me to karaoke for a true spectacle. We, I'm going to get JR to just make a karaoke event at Lock and Load. And Danny, can you talk a little bit about what you're, what you're trying to achieve right there? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to work in uh, that more fleshy kind of pale color into some of the shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really not being very careful with it because the skin tone has – I, I want to add – a lot of striation and texture to it eventually, so I can go really fast here. I'm just trying to push in a warmer color so it doesn't look completely pale when I bring out the highlights later, because the highlights will be a lot more pale. Um, I don't know if that really made sense. Yep, sure does. Bring out the highlights in your life, in your eyes, those highlights make it right. And then Dallas, you sculpted all the the wound openings, right? So like all the meat that's underneath there. Yeah. That's just aluminum putty, yeah. Yeah, that's a. So what I did, um, there's a video out there. You can find this video. Um, I took a Dremel and I just I just bored all those out of the resin of the jacket out, and then I smashed it full of P3 aluminum putty. Sculpted the striations of the meats. Um, they're not perfectly anatomically correct by any means. Um, that's see exactly. Um, also, it's a big, it's a big dracodil. So a fantasy creature. <laughs> and then I sculpted the uh, the flesh over top to tie it to the existing fleshes. So it worked pretty good. Danny did the exact same thing. I did so also in a few spots where it was tighter and I had to be a little more careful. 
because I don't want to cut off my hand or grind through my finger with the Dremel, which I have done before, and it's not fun. Uh, I actually heated it with a heat gun till the uh, resin was slightly softer. Nice. And I went in with a uh, with my E3 hobby knife and our clippers, and I was able to just clip some of it out and be a little more careful with it in a place that it was a little precarious to hold. And then, Danny, you also have an insider that uh, goes through each of the steps that you took to mm -hmm. basically make this guy, and I believe that's going up early next week. Yes. Uh, it might even be out. Nope, next week. Next, next week. week. Okay, cool. I next control week. the signal. Perfect. <laughs> Stay tuned. Get an insider. Get an inside look at Danny's process. That will be my first insider ever, too. I'm yeah, so excited. check for that, I believe, on Thursday of next week around uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. That should go Thursday. up on privateerpress.com. I got an insider. I need to finish writing for you. I gotta get that done. That's feeling pretty highlighty on this little arm. Are you gonna finish today? I'm not. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna get pretty far. I feel like I'll get a lot of the flesh done. But, uh, yeah, these details are gonna take a while. I'm work on his little face here. I mean, it's on the other side, so you can play with the shadows and kind of pinch that down a little bit, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Grip! It's just the way it works. Everything's better when you have to work for it, though. Uh, what's the, you know, they, they say nothing worth doing or anything worth doing isn't easy. Wait, how's it go? That was close enough. You get the gist. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, man, I can't remember. You could just make something out. I'll believe you. If it's not hard, screw it. That's not it. Close enough. I mean, really, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't sure. remember the exact. It's it's nothing worth doing is easy. I think is it? well, it depends on which which quote you're going for. Because there's the Kennedy one in regards to you know going to the moon, right? Yeah. We don't do it because it's easy. We do it because, because it's, it's hard. Yeah. You know? And then the other one is anything worth doing is worth doing right. Mm. I mean that's true. Well, then no, there is one that's like it's. Nothing worth doing is easy. That's what Menoff John said. It's just literally nothing worth doing is easy. Yeah. Danny Carter Williamson likes your hands. Thanks. Hi, Carter. Hope your dog's good today. He has the cutest dog ever. A little, little corgi named Boots. Boots? The corgi? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh my god, dude. I'll show you photos later have them because we sometimes take her out because dogs so you're working with uh with a white there what are you what are you rocking pals uh this is still the highlight color uh it's a sickly skin mixed with crick's bane highlight mixed with troll blood highlight so you um, got like all the different shades of blue and green in there <laughs> yeah it's just chaos it's the way i like to paint just having a good old time with well, it. It's a, it's a very aquatic sounding highlight, so I think it'll work out pretty well. Sickly Troll Crick's Highlights. Sickly Troll Crick's Highlights. I got hair on the end of my brush. I mean, hopefully yeah, I got more wood. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, that that, yeah, that, that's like, how they mix. There's this crazy oh. stray one. Hopefully it's a beard hair. Cause I ain't got hair on top of my head. Plot twist. <laughs> uh, 
So do you have like an ultimatum of when I have to throw my crow back before you fire me? <laughs> Are we good here? Well, that's a non sequitur that no one understands. Thank you, Danny. Well, way to keep about it how weird. suddenly you uh, sprouted hair that's not your beard along the end of your brush. It made me think of the fro. Once upon a time, I had a giant fro. As glorious mane. People want it to come back. I do not. Uh, Zach Parker asks, what up from Berlin? Did we get the office raccoon? Sadly, no, we did not. I was really looking forward to get, getting Bandit, the little office raccoon, but it has not yet come to pass. Bandit? Well, it's it's terrible name. He's got a little bandit mask. A little no. raccoon. He can run around the office, steal everybody's not little the tools least and stuff. Creative raccoon name I've ever had. I, but it fits. No. That's not. No, I'm getting a pet raccoon for the office that brings people uh, bags of marshmallows. Okay, well, that's better. And his name is Doorstop. Because he's a fat raccoon. Oh, snap. And I'm on brand. <laughs> <laughs> Just a fat raccoon in the office that runs up with a bag of marshmallows and hands you one. Mm -hmm. You only get one marshmallow. Just and he hands it to you. you with the that and you then have. he runs away with the bag. Because <laughs> you ever seen a raccoon walk on two feet? Oh, mm -hmm. So because he decided to pop into the stream, I'm going to plug his book. If people want to read a really good book by Mr. Zachary C. Parker, they can get Wrath of the Dragon Father. Mm hmm. There's a question about longevity of brushes I saw. Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. His name uh, is not S'mores. His name is Doorstop. Nathan yeah. Howard asked right there. Doorstop, happy medium. Boom. Nope, up just a little bit. I can't see it. Right there. Uh, how often do you find your main work brush lasts? How often do you reach for a new brush? Um, uh, my primary brushes can last, if I paint for eight hours a day, five days a week, I've had primary brushes last for over a year uh, or three months. Just depends on what I'm doing, right? It, just, it depends on what you're doing with them, like how you treat them. But, I mean, I got brushes. I, mean, I got P3 brushes from years ago that are still good. The work brushes can take a real beating, man. And then all the time on the terrain. Danny James R. Keller asks, "How did you get started at Predator Press?" Um. Well, I was working in uh, the film industry before this, but I always grew up playing games. I uh, had a blind water army back in the day, right when they came out. Um. But yeah, I was hopping around doing different uh, film jobs, working in primarily stop motion, like animation stuff. Uh, building miniature sets for them. And then I, uh, a friend um, who also works in the miniature industry sent me the posting from Privateer Press's website, and it sounded like a dream job. So I applied, and then I bothered Dallas a bunch over email, and I ended up getting out here. That's how it worked. That's how it works. It almost sounds like, like he applied the uh, P3 formula. Patience, practice, perseverance. I mean, that's what I did. I just kept going to conventions bothering Cruzy. Give me a job, fool. Then I did the big risk that I moved out here with no job. <laughs> just was like. Well, it's like Cortez burning his ships when he got to the New World. Yeah. It makes you hungry. Yeah. Oh, we were hungry. Good thing you had pancakes. Pancakes. That's what my oh man, little doorstop raccoon. He can pancake deliver assistant. deliver like little pancake platters to people. So good. Or you can help you like pour the syrup out. Oh man. Oh like my how god. Good would that be? That'd like, be great. On the table and the little he just pours thing. the syrup right out. 
Alec asks, Danny, any chance of a stop motion War Machine short film? Uh, that would be a lot of work. Be a lot of fun. Who knows what the future holds? Who and knows? then Miss Marissa Cosplay uh, thinks to your Dracula is very pretty and asks if you're going to do it all in sunset colors. Oh, you got the sunset dial. That's cute. Yeah. That's my, adorable. It's my adorable personality. Uh, and my uh, that's not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Zach, it's John. How you doing? He was asking who was doing the commentary. That's a murderous machine. No, no, no. When it's not Danny or Dallas. It's me. Ooh. So many little highlights. Just little little glistening highlights on his little face. His little face. Oh, we got quiet all of a sudden. He, he, he was just in the zone. I'm trying to add more sunset colors. He's in the tank! Drew Miller says, when is P3 going through CID? Work brushes are OP. Uh, working as designed. Yep. Yep, working as intended there, buddy. Alex says, tequila sunrise, Dracodile. Mm. Totally in. Mm -hmm. Twice. Super down. It's one of my favorite drinks, actually. Yeah, I'm not really worried too much about the contrast on the top of his head yet, because I'm going to put a bunch of glow up there, so I'm just kind of working in what I can without getting too carried away. This is not the perfect brush. This brush is taking a beating, but you know what? I'm still using it. Still works. I'll make it work. Still applying paint, paint where paint needs to go. And occasionally where it doesn't need to go, but that's what I blend it for. I'm gonna blend that away. What you do, Bush? The painting manager is all about fixing your mistakes. That's right. Uh, Carter asks, where did the idea for a zombie Dracodile mod come from? Uh, Gators. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest, for me. Yeah, it's a very, uh, I mean, it's an integral part of their story. Yeah, I mean, my favorite, uh, I, mean, I mean, actually, the only Gator Warlock I own is Maylock. And so I was just like, and my other Gators have all been started to be converted into zombies. And it's just, it's just natural evolution of, well, everything. Everything zombie Gator. And I really just felt like grinding into an expensive model and seeing what happened with that. I like mods. Are. I really enjoy making mods. And then James uh, had a question of who thought of the blue Gatormen that are in No Quarter Prime 3? Those are uh, based off Will Schick's Gators, actually. Yes, indeedy. Uh, Mr. Schick paints up some stuff, and he's a really good painter. And he had painted a Drakadal in like these nice, vibrant uh, blues. And so when we were doing that article, uh, Schick's uh, Gator got, Schick's Drocodile got brought up. And well, we he had it next to his Conquest, I think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so we kind of, that got added into those color schemes as, yeah, is this based off Will Schick and his delicious paint? Private Drew Press does not recommend eating any paint. They are, however, non -sign. I mean his delicious paint jobs. All right, there's some highlights on that part. Just more highlights. That's what you need. I'm going to tone this down just a bunch as I move back along his backside. And what do you mean by tone it down? 
Uh, what's a little bright, and as I move down his uh, body, I want to reduce the brightness or the uh, uh, what's the word? Saturation. No. Contrast. Contrast. Uh, reduce the contrast and make make my highlights darker. Okay. So I'll just add more Crooks Bane highlight as I go down and away from his head. And I'll still create highlights, but just push the focus more toward his face. Ooh, that's a good question. Kevin Bashford asks, painting Blind Walker eye gem reflection. Hand paint the gem sparkle, paint with a gloss, or both? Uh, I paint the gem sparkle. Is there a band name, question mark? Gem sparkle? Gem sparkle. It's my pop band. Danny's over there just You, I stuff. swear, you pick the loudest tools <laughs> for any job you do. You, you're just like, what's the loudest thing I can find? That's what I want to paint with. That's a unique technique, Dallas. As I'm, I'm expecting one day for you to come in. With a brush strapped to a power drill. No, with Darn a it. with a <laughs> caterwauling cat strapped to a jackhammer, and be like, "I'm painting a miniature with this today." And I'll be like, "That's fantastic." I mean, I wouldn't put it past me. I just have to clear that. What with, like, is that? Yeah, what is the effect back. you're trying to get? Um, there? so this is actually a technique that uh, scenic painters use a lot for uh, for t either textured skin. Or uh, rock faces, actually. You use one of the cheap bags from uh, your, you know, grocery store. And you crumple it up. And you offload some of the paint. And when you press it onto your model or onto your terrain, it creates these really interesting kind of irregular blotches and striations. And if you keep your paint thin enough, it's not too... Uh, it's not too... Uh, Basically, it doesn't contrast too highly. It still kind of blends in. But it just creates this really interesting modeled effect, which is kind of what I'm going for on this gator skin after I've shaded it down. And, af and after you bump your nugget into the camera. Did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Oh, cool. There we are. If I had the fro, that would be even more of a problem. I'm sure that sounds fantastic on the other end. <laughs> sugar, 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 sugar. <laughs> Raven says, what artist hasn't mistaken their paint cup for their drinking cup? Just me? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. I don't. I've been there once. Nope. Luckily, it was just watercolors. Lesson learned. I have a very specific place I put my cup. I have a very specific place I put my water cup. I wonder why. Because <laughs> I, I did it once. <laughs> yep. yep. No, it's exactly why I would use a, like, a sealable water bottle <laughs> when, I am, when I am painting and doing doing stuff. And there's nothing worse than drinking from like a paint cup that's been sitting for like three days. Like you do that once you you adapt and you learn your lesson. You don't keep doing the same thing over and over. You stop. I've certainly been there. I have a very specific place my drink cup goes. And I have a very specific drink cup. Like at work, I have one cup. At home, I have one cup. Now I have cups for guests, but I have one cup that I use. Does Zane ever mess with that system? No, he's not allowed to. <laughs> he knows better. He has one cup. What are you talking about? <laughs> you taught him the system. Yes. It's like excellent. Oh my god, have you ever had a, like a roommate that's like, you go, you wake up in the morning, there's no dishes. You come home in the evening and there's literally ten cups. Like, what'd you do? I, uh, I have unfortunately been that roommate. Oh my god, that would drive me yeah, insane. Yeah, exactly. Well, we don't live together. It's fucked up. Oh god, that would drive me insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cup. Why are you Why are you getting a new cup? You just had water. Oh, it's dirty now. It was water. Well, sometimes I set it down. I forget where I put it. That's why I have one spot. One spot. One cup, one spot. I'm telling you, it works. It just works. Pope Ketrick says that uh, they use a uh, small mason jar for their for their paint water to keep it. Because <laughs> then it doesn't feel like the yeah. the coffee cup, so on and so forth. Like I use all Privateer Press branded uh, 
cups for my water cups mm -hmm. for my paint water. So I know if I reach for a private tube press cup, that's got paint in it. <laughs> 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 so I have two. My my uh, my retribution mug is for drinking out of because I like the taste of vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mercenary cup holds my water for my paint. See a system. I like systems. And Ed Burrell is here too. Yeah, I saw him. He's picking on me. My name is Dallas. I learn stuff. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't go with why didn't you learn anything while I was still working with you or something. Oh wow. His words, not mine. No, they don't. No, those those, those were, were your <laughs> words. <laughs> Damn. Darn foiled again. Oh, I love all the little texture on this guy. So much little little meat textures on his feet. Feet meat. <laughs> no? Like like eating chicken legs. Oof. I'm talking about chicken oh. feet. No, I'm not having chicken legs tonight. No? You don't, you don't eat chicken feet? Mm, never have actually. Not bad. Does it taste like chicken? Not really. Mm. That's kind of makes me shit. It's odd that like everything apparently tastes like chicken except for chicken feet. My favorite thing is that is that apparently like the Twitch interface won't let me change the name of the broadcast, so it still says CID Manowar. Because <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh man, that's just gonna make somebody mad. No, someone brought it up at the beginning of the stream. I was like, Twitch isn't letting me change it. And they're like, mm, Twitch. So. <laughs> so we're good. Uh, somebody, uh, there you go. You got it. Somebody's asking where to buy the Drakadon. You look like you nailed I pop, it. I popped that link right. in there. Store.privateerpress.com. Click on that Black Anchor Heavy Industries logo, and you will see the Drakadon right there. It's such a good kit, man. It's like a kit itself. Get yourself a Drakadon. They're dope. Drakadon.com. That's He's not a thing. I don't know what that takes you to. Don't com. go there. Drakadon.com? Yeah, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it goes anywhere. <laughs> Private Press does not support Drakadon.com. Currently. All right, more highlights. Woo! Woo! These new flesh washers are so good, man. Mm -hmm. Which one are you using? I am using Caspian flesh wash. Right. That one's more yellow, so it's going to keep in that tones you want. Are you going to use Cossite? I don't know if you would use Cossite, would you? Oh, and on his, on his back, I will. Now it let me update it. So now the stream actually says dueling dragon dials like it's supposed to. I'll probably push some of that in on his back and on the ropes. Now that Danny is done with his plastic vaggery, we'll go take a look at what he's got going on. So what color are you using there, and what are you, what are you trying to achieve? Right now I'm uh, going in with Caspian Flesh Wash, and I'm just pushing some of these shadows even further with a bit of a muted brown wash. So you're sticking with the warm colors currently? I am. Mm -hmm. The Caspian has a bit of a yellow tinge to it, as Dallas was saying, so it kind of fits with fits with what we what Your I've been doing sunburst mm -hmm. Now it all is going to lighten up heavily when I go back in and uh, kind of lightly dry brush out some of the texture. I mean, that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I like to work very broad and then uh, work my way back in. Sure. And is that just like a ceramic tile that you're using as like a palette? It is. Um, so I use my... Uh, I use the well palette, like Dallas does, uh, to disperse my paint, but I do a lot of really quick mixing and offloading on this ceramic uh, tile. A lot of people like, you know, just plastic. I do as well, but tile I can clean very easily, and it's, you know, hardware stores give them out for free sometimes. I do like ceramic. 
with some packing tape on the back in case it breaks and doesn't shatter all over my bag. Smart. So, and then Nate's asking, any advice on painting bloody innards slash tissue like the exposed flesh on the Drax or Barnabas 2? And Nate, I would point you to the Formula P3 Presents video for the skin and moans. It's a two-part video, and not only does it have exactly what you're four looking part for. Four-part video. Four-part video. Four-part video, and it's in part number four. Yeah. It has um, exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, the big thing you're going to be seeing is, um, I mixed the wrong colors. That's what you're going to be seeing, is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, red ink, Thamar black, brown ink. Those are your colors, umble umber, mixing those together to find the blood you want. The blood you want. The and then James is asking uh, for, for both of you, any particular kit or kits that you think paint themselves because of how good the sculpt is? Wait, what was that question? Are there any kits or model, you know, kits that we've got that you think almost paint themselves because of how good the sculpt is. Oh, yeah, this one in Skin and Moans. This one, Skin and Moans. This Skin and Moans definitely like. Uh, I painted the studio one of that in like a day and a half. So like nice. it just came right together. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff I painted where it just it just come right. To, oh, Prospero for Golden Crucible feels like that. Um, when I painted him, he just kind of came right together. So, also the uh, the new posse, actually. The posse's like, pretty good. Yeah. They have such good uh, like the depth on their detail. Like they're really, you can pull the paint out of them really fast. So. And then Chris Burnett was asking how you got the effect on on his kind of armor plating on the back, and that was just Zenithal priming, right? Uh, who? For Danny. Danny. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Zenithal prime, and then just really quick dust with. Uh, two colors of airbrush. I thinned the paint for the airbrush like really thin so it was very transparent and actually airbrushed over the zenithal. Look at that stuff. And then Dallas, are you still just toning him down or? Uh, I'm throwing some shadows on his feet. I realize this shadow, this foot is not very shadowed. And what do we got there? Maybe some umbral umber and something? Umbral umber, coal black. I'm just coal black. quickly shadowing the foot a little bit. Uh, there's some Crixbane base in there as well. Just to, just to add some shadow. I just didn't have enough shadow on his feet. I'm going to go ahead and paint his toenails because they're driving me nuts. They're throwing off my eye. You can't, you can't have the Dracodile coming out looking all ratchet. No! All right, I almost got one side highlighted. Just in this tail. Yeah. Are we on the screen? How's that, John? Mm. Pretty good, yeah. If you're painting the upper side of them, there you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna do some little lines. Can you see that? Yep, sure can. Just those are very little, little lines. Very little, very light touch. Just the tip of the brush to get some little texture highlights. And maybe now that Danny stopped moving all over the place, I can undo that. That boy's got energy. It's true. Well, he had to go digging through his paints. He had to very vigorously, like, you know, clean his brush. He had one to play with a plastic bag. Right. One of these days, he'll learn that, that lavaliers and <laughs> live streams mean that, you know, subtle movements. I don't know if that's a thing that I can do. Get better. <laughs> So we have the giant croc. Alec is asking if there's any chance of a giant frog. I haven't seen anything. I'm not going to count it out. But I think a croak would have to like live more than three days <laughs> in order to get that big. 
I would love that. Uh, I have an idea for one, but it's it hasn't gone anywhere. But I have an idea for a giant croak, uh, gargantuan. I'd be all about it. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Well, Dogs are actually my favorite animal. I, I just love the croaks, and uh, yeah, I, I have an idea. It's not gone anywhere, but um, I would love <laughs> to see it happen. Sorry, I just I just read a question from Chris Burnett, and I have to I'm gonna have to read it out loud here. Cursed lack of airbrush. One more question, if it's okay. That model is obviously. Whoa, 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 whoa! You don't need an airbrush. Yeah, no, but we're gonna we're gonna come back to that. The model is obviously the coolest thing since Jean Claude Van Damme in denim up a mountain. <laughs> How do I get that model in my army? I have a fair amount of Signar and the Company of Iron Box for Pharaoh. Do I need Gators with my Pharaoh? You can absolutely take Gators with your Pharaoh. Minions is minions, so yes, your uh, your Dracodil can fit right into your Minions army or into your Scorn army. Does work for scorns. And now, explain why he does not need an airbrush. So, yeah, you don't need an airbrush by any means. Like, you can zenithal highlight and prime with a can of black primer and a can of white primer. Like, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I, I just, that's, a, an airbrush is just a tool. The, the, you can do everything you need to do without it. Um, I've even used a very like large, very very soft uh, paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Sure. Like just a like one that has like a flat edge to yeah. get that same kind of like if I want to do like an angled effect. Yep. No, I very very rarely use an airbrush actually. Yeah, I, I uh, do not use an airbrush very often at all either. It takes me longer to <laughs> takes me long, especially if I'm using a really nice expensive airbrush. It takes me longer to clean the guy yeah. after than it does for me to do the blends like to the point where they'll look cool and acceptable after I xenophil or, you know, however I decide to blend it. Like, I don't want to mess with the airbrush. Yeah, and in the uh, P3 video where we show an example of how to do xenophil highlighting, we do it with primer. Yeah, it's just with primer, and then I just use glazes. Like, this is, this, this is the same thing. Well, I mean, that's the thing. There are some miniature painters, right, that rely heavily on airbrush, like, all the way through their their uh, their pipeline. If you're just doing, like, basic blends and stuff, you know, and really mostly base coating, it's, it doesn't seem like you always need it, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, you definitely don't always need it, but to a certain extent as well, it's it's how some people prefer to paint. Absolutely. And, and like Dallas said, it's a tool, so it depends mm -hmm. on what technique you're going for, mm -hmm. what tool is going to work best for you for that technique, because there are often a number of different ways to tackle any problem. Absolutely, like using a plastic bag. Yeah, and like like I said, like, it's, like I'm not trying to say it, you don't, it's a tool. Um, there's, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. So just because you don't have an airbrush doesn't mean you need an airbrush. Just because you have an airbrush you know, doesn't mean it's not it, like, ah, uh, what am I trying to say? It's all we good. Got there. <laughs> and I then uh, Micken says, that's a sweet model. I'd love to see one painted up with moss and stuff growing on the back spines. Ooh, that'd be really fun. That'd be cool. Like some kind of like swamp like earth elemental yeah. dracodile. That'd be really neat. Elemental dial. Elementile. Elodile. We got there. We always do. Unfortunately. Draco mental. <laughs> He's so mental. Oh my god, all these little highlights. You're over there like still broad painting. I'm over here like all like look at my little tiny dot. I don't have the attention span for that right this second. I'm gonna work my way up to it. Gotta, you, know, you gotta build into yeah, that. Gotta psych myself up to go in and do the fiddly bit. And then Chris followed up with, uh, you know, any tips on how to, to field that big old boss monster? And there's so many different options. Um, it it really gen is going to come down to what your playstyle is, which caster you or warlock you really want to take with an well, in this case, warlock. Didn't Tons of different ways. Or if you want to use him as a big old nasty monster for two people or three people to gang up on in Company of Iron. Yeah. Or if you want to use him in your Iron Kingdoms RPG yeah. games or what have you. 
Didn't Hungerford do a write up on that too? He did. Um, there is one on privateerpress.com in the insider section uh, that's just blind water in general and a couple of different uh, armies for it, as well as one that's uh, some suggestions on what to do with the Dracodow. Dracodow! Dracodow! But the, but the best way to field him? Paint him and put him on the table. Yep. In fact, that's kind of the only way to do it. Play it painted 2018. Get your paint on 2018. So, Grab as we as we wind thing. down our hour Grab here, we'll go a couple extra minutes because it took a little bit to get everything lined up and running. Uh, need more questions that you guys have for Dallas or Danny. Or Ask tell us now. what you're painting. Show us pictures of what you're painting. Tag us on uh, social media. Be like, yes, please. We have a way to do that, right, Darren? Oh, yeah. Like So basically, you can either tag Official Privateer Press in your Facebook posts if you make them public for just those specific posts. Or if on Twitter you just say, at Privateer Press, and then I get excited, I go check those out. It's one of my favorite parts of my job is I get to go look at all the cool stuff that people in the community are making and share it. Uh, same thing on Instagram. Uh, you can actually just tag it with Play It Painted, and there's a way for you to find that now because Instagram finally decided to make uh, searchable hashtags. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was only like a couple weeks ago. I think it was while I was at LVO. And I'm like, way to get with the times, Instagram. <laughs> Hashtag play it painted. Yup. Is that what we said? That's my favorite hashtag. The other one, hashtag your army your way. That's your a good one too. Way. Yep. Especially if you're doing something fun and creative and really want to make sure that it, uh, that we know it's trying to stand out from, say, you know, studio scheme or traditional colors. And then James says, Danny, any best advice for new painters? Um, yeah, I mean, mostly <laughs> just keep practicing is really, I mean, just, it takes practice and don't start, you know, don't get discouraged when you're just experimenting with a new technique. Like e every model is a learning experience. And so you can't treat everything like it has to be perfect. Uh, you know, when you're done, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always strip down a model. So take some risks and learn from it. Also, honestly, watch Dallas's videos. They're really good. They're really good. Perfection is the enemy of done. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite color is done. So I would just say take risks, and each model I like to practice some sort of new weird technique on. So, well, you like people ask you how you got started here. Did you know how to? Um, Do you know how to brush balloon when you got here? I did not. Like, um, but you've been practicing, right? I have been practicing a great right. deal. And also pancakes and painting with you on weekends has helped a lot. Well, that helps. <laughs> but, but practicing those techniques is what gets you those techniques. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying where like I'll paint a specific model where I'm just like on this one I am like I am not going to rely on the other ways that I would have painted this before. I'm going to two brush blend this and it will be how it will be. And that's just okay. And then Dallas I'm going to lob this one in your direction. Alec asks what do you do when you have a big painting setback, how do you get back up on the horse? I don't know what a setback is. Can you define that? Uh, like a block, or maybe you ran out of a color so you can't finish that model right now, but that's where your head's at. Like any, anything that, that takes you out of your zone, how do you get back in the zone? Um, I work in a studio. There's no such thing as a zone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then when you're painting for fun. <laughs> like what's, what's the... Zone. Okay, never mind, Dallas. Shut up, Danny. Same question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you ever been you ever been distracted by twenty people at I, once actually, while painting? Kind Danny. Of, kind, yeah, exactly. I was, like, I was just about to say I'm uh, kind of in the same boat as Dallas. Which is the way to <laughs> stay in the zone is to never get in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, you just kind of have to get used to jumping onto different things and kind of knowing where you're at. I do actually want to field this question in a more serious manner. Um, <laughs> but I, I, so weirdly enough, I am kind of being serious. Um, I am, I have a very blue collar attitude. I have a very blue collar work, work ethic. And um, I spent many years in restaurant management. Um, I spent many years <laughs> working in factories. 
So when it's time to paint, it it's just it's just time to paint, right? I just I just walk over and I go, it's time to put this green on this guy, right? If I'm go, oh, I'm out of green, then I go, I'll get green tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then I come back and I go, it's time to do the green on this guy. For so me, when I can't decide, me. like, so I'm gonna try tackling this from another angle to see if it helps answer the question as well. Is you know, so say I'm working on my Silverline Storm Guard. Someone brought those guys up earlier, and I've got a set of those as well. Uh, and I'm just not able to figure out what to do next to really make them stand out. Like I didn't have a good plan. I will just grab one of them and I will try tons of different stuff until something happens that I like. I'll paint over and over and over again, again until something happens. Yeah. And basically, not necessarily stopping is what helps me. Like if I just keep going, even if it's awful. Another thing too is, uh, I mean, I get distracted very easily, <laughs> very easily. Something that helps me is I write a lot of lists. And I write a lot of lists in a lot of different places. I keep lists in my phone, lists on post-it notes, lists in a notebook, so that no matter where I am, uh, I can kind of always jump back to where I was uh, if I Yeah, you need a right. notebook for sure. And so that's really important. Also, the act of writing something down uh, psychologically like helps get it out of your head yep. too, so then you won't be stressing about it really. It really is a psychological thing there. Alrighty. I want to answer, there's a few more questions there. I, th I think they're very important. Mm -hmm. um, so just, just to reiterate, um, writing stuff down. Um, and, and Finding a way to keep going. Keeping that process going. Um, uh, Tim Stevens, how often do you guys usually paint per week? Um, At least 40 hours. <laughs> I mean, Man, I, I mean, I can paint eight hours a day at work and then go home and paint three or four more, sometimes more, um, before I actually uh, work at PP. I was a freelance painter, and I was painting 12 to 15 hours a day. Um, before that, like when I... Uh, I worked in an office or a restaurant. I would work all day and come home and paint. Like, this is what I do. Dallas is the machine. It's what I do. It's all, I mean, it's literally all I think about. Oh, that explains so much. Well, except for when you're playing some sweet video games. You know, even then, I'm just looking for new ways to paint my miniatures, to be perfectly honest. Oh, I totally there. use colors. I do, Reference. don't I? I use, I use. Uh, like a lot. I've noticed it. You pull it up a lot. I pull up a lot of video game reference uh, in my personal projects. Well, I also love getting those texts on YouTube. How hard would this be to make? <laughs> like, <laughs> we do something <laughs> like this. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Are we closing? We are closing. Oh my God, out. you're the new Tony. Well, that and it's it's lunchtime, dog. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah I could do lunch. It's pretty much lunchtime. So, of course, you can join Dallas and various folks from the studio here every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. You can also join us on Tuesdays, Tuesdays for Weekly Rumble, in which case you might get to see some of these guys in action. But I know we are doing some more Extreme Colossal Wrestling next Tuesday. I heard. I know there's going to be some surprises there and some dopeness. Um, and then, yeah, just keep tuning in and we will keep making stuff for you so long as you like share subscribe and comment that lets us know what you do like what you don't like and uh, we can make this as entertaining for as many folks as possible next week's weekly rumble from my understanding is going to be bonkers it's going to be so good like oh my god bonkers all right danny any parting thoughts that don't involve plastic bags uh no just keep painting Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Just good. keep painting. Thanks so, for having me. There you go. Hashtag play it painted. Share your pictures. We want to see what you're painting so that I can share them on the stream while Dallas and folks are painting. So until next week, this has been Get Your Paint On. This is Dallas. This is Danny. And John. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.
crinkle, 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 crinkle.